Another edition of fly tying with Jim Ashura. Today we're going to tie a bead head sword back mayfly nymph. The hook I have in the vise. This is a Hemingway's. This is a nymph fly barbless hook. This is a size 12. This is an HC 114 and this is two extra long body. And you can get that from frostyfly.com. I'm going to add a little bit more weight on there. I have a 3 millimeter gold bead on there, but I'm going to add some 25 thousandths lead wire. And I'm going to add it mostly to the front. I'm going to start about in the middle. We'll give it about eight turns. Push that lead up into the bead and then we'll get rid of the excess I'm going to use 70 denier dark brown thread we're going to start by wrapping in back of the lead wire and we're going to push that lead into the bead that way and then we can go up the lead wire and back. Kind of try to build a little bit of a ramp there or a little bit of a taper. And I'm going to bring the thread back to the end of the flat. I'm going to put the tail on first. And for the tail, I'm going to use pheasant tail center. Just going to take maybe about a half a dozen of those nice uh, golden edges of that pheasant tail center. And we're going to make this uh, tail maybe one half to three quarters the length of the hook shank. And I'm going to wrap that up because this is going to help to fill that gap in from that step from the lead wires. I'm going to go up on top of that just a couple of turns and then you can take that off. I'm going to stop right behind those lead wires. Now for the body I'm going to use the stretch rib, Frosty Fly stretch rib and this is orange but it's more like a rust color and you can get that from frostyfly.com. It's going to make a nice segmented body. I have a piece here. I'm going to tie that in right. I want to keep that right at the lead wire, which will further help with that angle. Get several good wraps, and then you can pull it. And pull it back as you go back and that will minimize the thickness of that abdomen there and I'm going to bring this up to the thorax I'm going to come up start the thorax just a couple of wraps a couple of the lead wraps up I'm going to take that stretch rib I'm going to stretch that pretty far as we begin to wrap this just have to be a little bit careful so that your first wrap doesn't roll backwards I'm going to stretch this pretty good and I'm probably going to keep it stretched due to the fact that we have that taper up there and I'm going to bring that up and give that another wrap and I'm going to tie that in there I'm 
then when I go to cut it, I'm going to stretch that pretty good. And I have my, the piece I have here is about, it's shorter than two inches, and I started out with about four inches. Now for the wing case, I'm going to use Peacock Sword. Give it a nice, uh, a nice shiny uh, wing case there. I have about a half a dozen, I guess. See, they, they got that natural curve. You want to try to keep them together more or less. You can probably get two flies from each uh, section of peacock sword, depending on how long they are. We're going to tie them in. And then when they fold over, you're going to see that nice uh, colors on that wing case. Now for the thorax, I have some uh, chestnut color uh, hair dubbing, rabbit dubbing. And we're going to see what this does. We want to make a nice fat thorax, bring it up and bring it back again, and then bring that forward. Now I'm going to take my peacock sword, and I want it flat there, and lay them across. I'm going to tie them in. And then we're going to trim them off. I'm going to trim them nice and close. And you can see I have enough, plenty for another fly. Now for legs, I'm going to use a pair of goose biots. These are brown, you can use tan. And you only want that biot to be, go just barely into the body there. And put that right on the side. Take the other one, measure that up, put that right on this side, get that, there we go, we can trim off the excess. Now I'm going to take just a small amount of the chestnut dubbing once again, just enough to help hide that thread and possibly the uh, ends of the biot there. Using my whip finish, one, two, three, pull that tight, go ahead and trim that off. I'm going to put a little bit of head cement on the bead there. some on the bead and then inevitably got some on the dubbing and here we have a sword back mayfly nymph hope that you learned something from this video hope you would subscribe to my channel please refer me to your friends please visit my sponsors Leave comments, questions, suggestions, and most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.